In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. As I was preparing for Mass, talking with Joel and with the deacon, no lack of intentions to pray for. The earthquake in Haiti, Afghanistan. And I think it's beautiful on the part of Catholics, try to identify with those people in our own imagination. Despair, hopelessness, pain, fear. We pray for them. A reading from the book of Judges. The angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abizrite. While his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the winepress to save it from the Midianites, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, the Lord is with you, O champion. Gideon said to him, My Lord, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are his wondrous deeds of which our fathers told us when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? For now the Lord has abandoned us, and has delivered us into the power of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have, and save Israel from the power of Midian. It is I who send you. But Gideon answered him, Please, my Lord, how can I save Israel? My family is the lowest in Manasseh, and I am the most insignificant in my father's house. I shall be with you, the Lord said to him, and you will cut down Midian to the last man. Gideon answered him, If I find favor with you, give me a sign that you are speaking to me. Do not depart from here, I pray you, until I come back to you and bring out my offering and set it before you. He answered, I will await your return. So Gideon went off and prepared a kid and a measure of flour in the form of unleavened cakes. Putting the meat in a basket and the broth in a pot, he brought them out to him under the terebinth and presented them. The angel of the Lord said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened cakes and lay them on this rock. Then pour out the broth. When he had done so, the angel of the Lord stretched out the tip of the staff he held and touched the meat and the unleavened cakes. Thereupon, a fire came up from the rock that consumed the meat and unleavened cakes, and the angel of the Lord disappeared from sight. Gideon, now aware that it had been the angel of the Lord, said, Alas, Lord God, that I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. The Lord answered him, Be calm, do not fear, you shall not die. So Gideon built there an altar to the Lord and called it Yahweh Shalom. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, I say to you, it will be hard for one who is rich 
to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and said, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For men, this is impossible, but for God, all things are possible. Then Peter said to him in reply, We have given up everything and followed you. What shall there be for us? Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, that you who have followed me in the new age, when the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory, will yourselves sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for the sake of my name will receive a hundred times more and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. I think one of the finest compliments that can be given to anybody, a deacon, a priest, a bishop, who preaches is, it's real. It's real. I can truly identify in my own lived experience with what he is saying. I begin that way because I didn't have to look far for a topic for today's homily. In fact, you have to pick and choose. There are just too many themes there. It was right at the very beginning of your reading, which you always do masterfully, beautifully. God says to Gideon, the Lord be with you. And Gideon, by the way, he's not into any nonsense religion. I mean, this guy is, you're going to get it the way, well, if you're with me, why are all these bad things happening? Now, that's a real religious question. I tell the seminarians, if you think by the end of your seminary training that you're going to be able to answer everybody's question, you are, in the biblical sense, a fool. A fool. Now, words, what, what is the baseline? Life is a mystery. Interacting with God is a mystery. Not in the Sherlock Holmes sense, but in the sense of a profound, profound, profound truth that we can never really get our hands on. Never. Maybe in, maybe in eternity, I don't know. And so, so what, what is the grace today from that? To accept mystery in my life, but, but with trust, with trust. I, I love the example of a little baby in the arms of mom or dad getting vaccinated. Now, if you could enter into the thoughts of the baby, the baby is really saying, why is mommy or daddy allowing that lady to hurt me? The baby doesn't understand the pain. The other example that I love, look at a tapestry or an embroidery on the backside. All the knots, all the strings, it only looks beautiful from the front. What, what's the message? God sees what God sees, and I can only see what I see. So, uh, do I have an answer to many of life's questions? No. No and yes. 
What is the yes? I trust. You trust. We trust in the love of the Father. By the way, I don't know how this came up on the internet yesterday, but um, I was reading something about a Holy Father. One of his devotions is to Our Lady, undoer, untire, a, a, a tying of knots. Familiar with that? Our Lady, undoer of knots. I found this little prayer. prayer. Undo the knots of my mind, the knots of my heart, the knots of my life. Remove the have-nots, the can-nots, and the do-nots. The do-nots. Two little things relative to Vietnam. I'm kind of extra happy these days. You know why? Why? My helper called me the other day, said this on Sunday, and said, Father, you're the first to know my wife is pregnant. We're expecting our second child. Well, I'm all why has in this country. All of his family, his one sister's in France, the rest of the family, they're in Vietnam. So I said, well, I've got to do what a grandma, grandpa, brothers, so I screamed and yelled and jumped up and down. I think the priest at the house thought I was kind of losing it, and I was. God be praised. Why and his wife are expecting their second child. On the other side, things are terrible right now in Vietnam because of the virus. Sister Tu, one of my close friends, she's not at the mother house, but at the mother house of several hundred nuns, over 100 of them have the virus. Five have died in the past week, five. They were told by the local hospital, we're full, so don't bother coming. All they have, I've sent them Tylenol, vitamin C, a few other things like that. So let's count our blessings. Why God is allowing that to these beloved nuns, I don't know. But I trust. And I encourage you also to trust. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen.